Whoa. Uh, don't do that. That was bad. Aloha and welcome back to Practical Printing and welcome to another episode of SLA 101. Today we're going to talk about taking nasty used isopropyl alcohol, IPA, that you've used to process your resin prints from this to this. So let's do it. Okay, so this is a fairly easy but tedious process and it's gonna require just a few things that you may have around the house. You'll need paper coffee filters, a turkey baster, um, a reusable mesh coffee filter and some containers to process it back and forth. I picked up a good glass one for my raw dirty materials that are going to collect the junk. Uh, and you also, of course, a scoop is handy. And the other containers I picked up as I deviated there are just some generic uh, cheap plastic ones that are fairly disposable. And these will hold the cleaner IPA as we process it. And then of course, a recycled orange juice container uh, that you've washed out good um, is a good final resting place for it. Or if you've saved the bottles from IPA that you've used, you can put it back in those. It actually takes several days, a little bit at a time. And we'll meet back here at the end once we're done. What we're going to start off with for step one is a reusable coffee filter basket coffee filters, paper towels, IPA that you need to clean, and a glass, this case, a glass sun tea container. Still a little bit of white goo in the bottom there that didn't come out last time. Very slowly, basically, we're gonna take the turkey baster, suck up some IPA, and a little bit at a time, we're going to run it through the filter. This first step, what that's going to do is it's going to filter out any of the gunk that's already in the IPA and catch that in the uh, the paper filters. Now the reason I don't just pour it in is because I want to be able to control so that there's airflow going through and when this filter eventually gets clogged up and I need to change out the paper, I don't want it so full of the alcohol that I can't just easily swap it out. You can tell that we're not filtering out any color at this point because the pigments are still blended with the liquid. All we're trying to get is particulates out at this point point. and you'll see when I get to the bottom of this what I'm talking about. I'm going to pull the basket out of here, set that aside. Well, you can see some of the white buildup on there where it's exposed in here. And we're going to basically scrub that out and clean it later. Most of the sediment is here at the bottom, which you cannot really see. So far, we're doing good. We've made it this far on one filter. If you can see here, bottom of that pan, that milkiness, that is what settles to the bottom of the IPA uh, after you've done prints after a while. So we're going to now do two things. We're going to take this pan and wash it and then we're going to close this up and I'm going to leave this in the sun for a day or so. Got some good sunny weather right now so it hopefully goes quickly. Once it's been in the sun, that same white powder that's inside of here will start to congeal and settle along the bottom. So at that point we'll just repeat the exact same process with the turkey baster and we'll transfer it from here into another container, clean out the sediment, and then we'll do it back. And we're gonna go back and forth two or three times until we've filtered all of the, uh, the settlement out. And you'll s you can see how bright orange that is. I've been doing a lot of orange resin recently. If you compare that to, this is after it's been processed and all the sediment's been extracted from it as much as possible. Okay, you can see after sitting outside in the sun for a few days that the alcohol separated and all the resin kind of hardened up into a gloop. And we're going to use, I have these plastic jars as temporary containers here. And we're going to do the same process, but we're going to try to get as little of that white goop that's separated out as possible. Depending on how dirty your resin was will dictate how much of your IPA you'll be able to salvage. And you can see there that I'm starting to get some of this white gloop where it's caked up. So that's going to clog our filter, but we're going to keep going and try to get as much as we can. See so the gloop in there? It looks like a, almost like a custard. Just so you can see, that's the stuff that comes out of the resin. It's literally like custard. So why that drains? Because it's going slow. We're going to try to scoop out the gloop. Uh, double up my filters always with a clean filter. We're just going to go back to porting it over. 
and you can already tell that there's quite a bit of that white resin that's getting transported over so this is the point where we start to change filters quite a bit squeeze all the goop out and that's going to go into a different trash bin I have a bucket that I keep outside so once I'm done here this gloop will get added to that sits outside in the sunlight and it eventually hardens up and once that bucket gets full of this byproduct I'll, I'll take that to a recycling center whoa uh, don't do that that was bad that's why we have paper towels, but that didn't get most of them. To speed this up a bit, I've got this tea strainer that I'm going to stick a coffee filter in. If I can do this without dropping it. This isn't going to hold a lot compared to the larger one, but... And as you can see there, that's the goop that's left at the bottom. So, while that drains, I'm going to go wash this out. I'm going to basically full gloves on. Put some uh, paper towels and try to wipe out as scrape out as much of that gloop as I can to add to the bucket and then rinse it out with water and hopefully that should be drained by then. Okay so it's not perfect nobody's going to be drinking sun tea out of that again but it's clean enough for our purposes so we're just going to set it aside because we want to make sure that it's 100% dry before we ever use it again and this is about as low as it's going to get. So let's toss that filter at this point, as you can see, that's what our IPA looks like. Now we're going to repeat this process one more time into this other guy. Yes, I know it's a sun tea container and I could probably use the valve if I wanted to, but I still like to use the turkey basters so I have a controlled amount. Plus this cleaner IPA actually washes out the inside of the turkey baster. Okay, now we're going to reverse that process one more time. Pretty sure that all of the chunkies are out of it at this point. There's no way we're going to get all of the colorant out, but that actually serves as a reminder for us that this is a refiltered solution and not fresh and clean. So after that last clip ended, I actually ended up processing it two more times till I, f I felt like it was clean enough to be uh, reused again. And as you can see, we started off with this much IPA and we ended up with that. So there is a lot of loss in the process. Um, it's not full pool recovery, but it's better than nothing. Um, when I reuse this, what I will do is I will blend it with clean IPA to dilute it. So that way uh, it's not you know, full strength used uh, reprocessed IPA, but 50-50, uh, 80-20, whatever I happen to have on hand to dilute it and do that. One last thing I do want to touch on quickly is safety. Throughout the video, you saw me use a couple of different things. There were parts where I was not using any hand protection, parts where I was using these thin gloves, uh, the disposable kind that we would usually use when processing uh, prints, and these guys. Now, if I'm not touching or handling the materials at all, for example, during the early parts where I was just extracting it with the turkey baster, and I didn't have any skin t contact with the IPA. It's isopropyl alcohol, and I personally didn't feel like I need to glove up or protect myself for that. Um, during the later processes, when the resin started curing and hardening in it, where we got that white gunky paste, it's a little bit better idea to glove up at that point because that white paste is uncured resin. It's the same thing that you're printing with. Now resin isn't toxic. Um, it is an irritant, but it's not necessarily toxic, but it's still not a good idea to get it on your hands. If you do get it on you, you want to wash it off right away. Lastly, between the disposable gloves and these guys, I do want to point out these are just cloth on the back, but they are the rubber coated or, or whatever the the plastic is on these. This side does not allow penetration, the back part does. So you don't want to use these if there's a chance of getting it everywhere, but I prefer using these often in this process because of the texture of the gloves, especially working with the large glass jar. I find these to be a bit slippery and I don't want to drop a glass jar full of IPA, so I would rather, rather use these. If you're really concerned, you could double glove and put these on, I guess, underneath the textured gloves so that you have double protection. Uh, I harp on it often, but always be sure to read the MSDS or the SDS, depending on where you live, the material safety data sheet for the resins and the other 
cleaning ingredients that you're using, whether it's IPA or something else or some sort of a biochemical. Always make sure, especially if you're not using IPA, if you're using some other chemical, make sure that it's not going to have a caustic reaction with the resins. Again, check with the manufacturer or check with the MSDS. That will really give you the best idea of what you're dealing with. Don't necessarily trust things that you see on the internet where everybody is screaming that this is all toxic materials. Uh, it's certainly not good for you. You certainly don't want to bathe in it. And you certainly don't want to have long-term exposure to it. It's not going to turn you into a mutant ninja turtle if you get it on you. All right, so again, arm yourself by reading the documentation and making the informed decisions. Uh, every resin is different. Every manufacturer has different safety protocols in their documentation. So with that, food for thought, I will leave you today on SLA 101. We'll see you next time. Aloha.